Wait, wait, stop. That's the one. Welcome to Zen Ten Speaks, a show where I make new friends and reconnect with old ones. A show where everyone's stories may inspire you to tell your own story. In this podcast, we encourage everyone to get rid of shame, guilt, fear, doubt, and judgments for themselves and for others, and replace those with love, empathy, compassion, understanding, kindness, and to do your best in everything that you do. In essence, to get rid of things that no longer serve your well-being. To be true to yourself and be honest with others. No need to be politically correct. That's out the window with 2020. Here, we tell the raw, uncensored story. Your story. And tell the truth as you see it. Make sure you live your fulfilled life without permission or apologies. So, if you have a juicy, interesting, raw, unapologetic story and inspiring, please make sure to contact me at zen1021 at gmail.com. It is Z-N-T-E-N-N-21 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on most social media platforms. You know it. The IG, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, OnlyFans. I mean, not really. Uh, but yes, OnlyFans. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, not. <laughs> As you may have guessed it, my name is Zen, and welcome to the show. Good afternoon. I say good, good uh, morning. Or good afternoon. It, it's a joke. Um, all right. So. Okay, I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to make jokes that we don't understand. Yeah, yeah. So today we have a guest. He is known on Instagram as Brother Gregorio and or Gregorio Re- uh, Gerald. Gregorio is a phenomenal artist. We met on Instagram. His passion is homoerotic art, queer art, and creative art editing. He was so, I was so honored to have my portrait edited by Gregorio. And I will show the portrait now. He made it into his own art, mosaic style, collage, or kaleidoscope form. Here is a portrait of. Uh, Gregorio that he made for me. Please welcome our next talented guest, Gregorio. Gregorio, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Zen. Awesome. So please tell us a bit about who you are and what you do. Um, who I am? I am just like you. I'm your brother. Awesome, it's nice to have another brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I'm a, a, a guy from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm in a gay marriage. Uh, uh, that maybe explains uh, why I have this uh, 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 relation, this, hang, this hanging to homoerotic art. Um, uh, I am also father of four children um, because this uh, gay thing came a bit later in my life. Um, so it's it's very nice that uh, that I can give my husband uh, also the share of my children. Um, I am in daily life a massage therapist. Uh, I was working for a long, long time as a massage, uh, a mom, uh, a masseur, we call it, uh, a mom massage therapist. Uh, I'm a vegan cook. I'm very specialized in vegan tapas. Uh, I do a semi-professional, just like my art. 
while vegan uh, cook. How 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 did you get into vegan vegan, vegan cooking? Um, yeah, the, 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 all my stories are long stories. So I, I tried to to put it together. Um, I had a relationship with a with a girl. She was a vegetarian, and we got a baby. And then she wanted me to cook uh, vegetarian for him. And then my youngest daughter said, yeah, I also uh, want to be uh, vegetarian. And I started to cook for uh, people on reservation uh, vegetarian. I did that for 10, 15 years. And then I met my husband and he decided five years ago to uh, become vegan. Mm. And... um, for me, it was a little change to step over from uh, vegetarian to vegan, and it's a wonderful world, I can tell you. Um, first of all, you get free of the meat industry, and second, uh, it's a big, big world if you eat without meat. Somehow, when you eat without uh, with meat, um, you are always stuck to this thing and around it you build it with the pasta, rice, potatoes or whatever but, but now you can uh, I, I take beans or I take mushrooms, avocado all kind of things uh, to build up uh, the meals and it's really fantastic in the beginning I was a bit afraid that it might be limited but it's not and the longer I do it, the more possibilities I find. Right. De- definitely. I-, I love I love that. Especially that you're doing it for other people and you find new ways and it's an adventure. I was uh, vegan myself for a long time and of course the first day was a challenge. It's like saying, oh, why am I going to eat? There's no meat. But one thing people don't realize is what most people when they eat they eat everything other than meat as well no one's well not no one but most people don't sit and just eat a cow at a setting they eat other things like vegetables or roots and potatoes etc so that's a yes. great that's a great thing to remember to that there's not only meat we actually eat more other things than meat and meat is the side yeah. dish i think so that that's a great yeah. Um, observation there yeah and I really uh, want want also to to say that uh, eating vegan made me more and more aware of this meat industry that I find really difficult to digest how living souls like we are all the animals are my brother too (laughs) Definitely. And uh, it's in- incredible how they get treated in order to make money. Uh, it feels also like it's not to feed us, but it's to make money. And uh, above all, I want to understand that people believe in their jobs and uh, try to, to bring good meat on the market. But the industry is exploded and they are so m- so much need of me to fulfill the needs of the supermarkets that is uh yeah that they behave like like beasts i think all right that's that's a great story so tell us uh why did you start doing the art that you do on instagram like how and why and why um the story starts in fact that uh, I love to to to, uh, to be a photograph, and I had my own dark room, uh, made a lot of pictures. Uh, it was mainly black and white, and I love doing it. Um, then uh, I became father, and as a father. Uh, you can see them almost all, all day what they are doing, besides uh, cleaning the nappies 
rice or giving them porridge or whatever, they make photos of the child. So I did. I made a lot of photos. And then at a certain moment, you are with 100 photos and what you can do with it. So I started to uh, make collages with the photos of my children so I could uh, uh, have 10 instead of 100 and not boring other people with 100 pictures of my children, but just 10 and then nice rearranged uh, like uh, as collages. That's how I started it. And then I continued, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of social engaged type, uh, reading paper. Then I find out when I'm reading the paper on one page, uh, I could see uh, really horrible things uh, from far away. Uh, on the other page, uh, I could see uh, beautiful things, uh, the third page I saw sports, whatever, it came all together, the whole world comes together in a paper. And I, I, I get this feeling, how can I see on this page one thing, on the other page something completely different, and I start to make collages of that to bring different news items uh, together. Um, that's how I started this collage of things. In fact, with my children and later with the newspapers. Wow, that's great. Is it? All right, so we can uh, go on one of the photos you sent me on Instagram. Was was that a, from the newspaper? It looks like from paper and is black and white. Was that one of those yeah. collages? Yes, yes. So, so the first uh, photograph is very interesting. Can you tell us a bit about it? Um, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, there are people from Africa. It's, uh, uh, I, I started to 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 make it a big on a bit on size. So it start with children of Africa that are queuing to get food from the Red Cross organization. <laughs> And behind it are uh, uh, there's an army of Taiwan. Uh, there are um, prisoners in Latin America. Uh, there are people from Asia, uh, from all over the world in their uh, special circumstances. There's also uh, a Dutch government uh, hidden in it. Uh, they are laughing. Others are tight. Others are crying. And it ends up with uh, a stadium uh, of a football match. People shouting uh, from enthusiasm has nothing to do with pain, but mm. only with sport. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting, and definitely I sh I'll show it on the on the screen here. And the next photo it looks like there are cows. What is that really? Yeah, because of this industry, we talked about it. Right. Um, I, I live in a country uh, that is uh, known uh, about this high uh, meat production. The area where I live um, is, an, is a, a region where a million people live, but they live one and a half million pigs. So more pigs than people. And uh, the funniest thing is that when you go around in the area, you see not one pig. They are all hidden in barns or how do you call it? stables, whatever. Right. Um, they live with so many close to each other and uh, there are high standards maybe for taking care of them. But... Um, yeah, I took a picture of a cow in that time. Uh, it, it, it is like pigs with cows. Uh, they live too close to each other. When one gets a disease, they get it all. Um, so uh, uh, it, it was a hot item in the 90s. It was the crazy cow illness. I don't know if you call it like that in English too, but we call it the crazy cow illness. <laughs> And it's so sad to 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 see those animals uh, that are in fact the victim of an industry um, getting killed by the effects of this industry. And uh, yeah, other cows are looking over the the fence. Let's say yeah, it, it, it is a mix of two pictures. The 
the other cows, they were, it was just a picture also in the paper that they were standing in the field. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, such an intense um, happening. Uh, I needed to pay attention to it. Yes, it is. Collage. Right, you did a great job. It's very, the job you did in the collage you convey a you have a message and it conveyed and appeared clearly and it's amazing and it seems like one photo but it's several photos that you put in together yeah. because as i see yeah. in the photo here it's like the cow is looking at other cows laying down probably dead or sick and how human mm -hmm. thinks we are above it all and how we think they have no feelings but they probably are thinking like you and I, oh, wow, this is my mother or my neighbor dead and have disease and yeah. what's happening. And it's, it's very, it's very sad. Um, currently, as I mentioned, I used to be vegan. I'm not vegan anymore, but now I'm a, what's this called? Free again. So if it's free, I will eat it uh, because I, I'm in the catering industry. And so I've noticed that yes. instead of, basically starving myself or buying meat uh then if it's free because they throw it in the garbage anyway it's a exactly. it's a bad industry so i'll eat it and and also my doctor because of my body type i need to have some types of nourishment <laughs> which i was not doing when i was vegan properly uh so yeah definitely i do not endorse the killing and the money aspect of the industry but for feeding with example with different people around the world i do understand and i do not judge them on that aspect but when it comes to uh capitalism of murder and and uh mistreatments of animals thinking we're better than them it's definitely horrible and i do not support that yeah, yeah. Um, finally, I never became vegan, but I eat such little meat. And it's a bit what you say, when it comes on my way, I'm not going to be an activist or spoiling uh, the party and saying, yeah, I don't eat meat and blah, 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 blah. Right. But I don't, I just don't buy it. It's, it's enough. And I don't want to exclude myself. I don't want to exclude meat eaters but i need this awareness of what is happening in those barns with all those animals you don't see yes 100 percent. So the next collage is the third one. It shows a child with a white flag or cloth. Would you explain that, please? Yeah. Um, I made it a long time ago. Uh, remember that the, 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 the boy with the white flag uh, is the flag of peace. A little child in Chechnya in Russia. Uh, Grozny, uh, it was a horrible uh, war over there, and you you can see this child comes out of the the the, the yeah how do you say it the, the shit of of fighting of war right um, and it's so typically that he walks with a red uh, with a white flag and at the same time in Africa. Uh, there are children of his age uh, uh, brainwashed and getting guns in their hands. Right. Um, and this this uh, contradiction that I saw in the newspaper, I find it also. Uh, yeah, uh, I I don't know the word. I can look it up. Hart hartverscheurend, we call it. Um, it's good to to use this word heartbreaking it's heartbreaking to see this kind of things what children get into in war or being even at 10 years old active in war how can this happen in our world it's so sad to see 
Yes, definitely. I do you remember what year is it the war like the the African war between those tribes, uh yeah, what you you talked about is maybe Rwanda. I think I I forgot now where this this boy came from. But also in Central Africa somewhere. I I I don't remember exactly. But um, yeah, I also uh, it, it, it happens in in more parts of Africa. But it is uh, I think the end nineties. Right, right. I I remember. I was a kid, but I remember my parents talking about it, and it was in the news. And and then later on, as an adult, I watched a movie with Wanda, um, Hotel of Rwanda or something maybe like that. And it was yeah, yeah it's very heartbreaking. It was, it was around nineteen ninety five. Right. Uh, if, uh, I can sort that. I can maybe look it up. Right. Um, Those situations definitely, even what's going on right now in. Afghanistan my people are asking me what do I think of it my only answer is I am grateful of where I am that's what I think of it because thinking of it because if I cannot do anything uh, physically so mentally the only thing I can do is being grateful of where I am now and making sure every day that I practice gratitude and treating others around me well that's what i can do as yeah. as michael jackson says i love uh as you may if you if you were a fan as well with his lyrics he says if you uh i don't remember exactly but the quote but if you want to make a change look at the men in the mirror and and make the change up for yourself so so what i do is instead of I'm not someone who usually feel bad, but if I feel bad, what I do is I turn that feeling back into what can I do myself to create the change around me? So if I see war elsewhere, I make sure I create peace within me and around me. And especially at work, there is this person, uh, I want to call her horrible, but <laughs> I don't, yeah. But, She's not listening. Yeah. So, but I don't want to at the same time. So I want to practice empathy to say, I feel bad, but I don't want to have pity either. So I just make sure that when I'm around her, I'm at peace. I'm at peace with myself and I have empathy for her because whatever is happening, because what we put out is what's inside of us. So I make sure what I, what comes out of me is peace and smiling and happiness and respect because regardless that deep down i feel like she's horrible i still have respect for her because the way she behaves toward me she bullies me and and she gossip and do all these things and i just have to make sure that that i do not take it personally one of my favorite mm-hmm. books if you remember if you know is the four agreements is uh in one of the agreements is do not take things personally and I have to remember that who she is is not about me and that's her life. So w- when it comes to war, people, I often say on Facebook when I post that war happens first inside of us, second with our actions, and third our actions toward our family, friends, neighbors, lovers, etc. People think war happens in other countries to other people and it's a bigger scale. But as we know, a penny or one cent or one dollar amount to a million or a billion, which is the war. And people yeah. tend to forget that. They're thinking, oh, war in Afghanistan or war in World War Two or et cetera, or Kosovo or in Georgia or Jordan or whatever. And they don't think about the war that's in their families. That's where it starts. So that's a very great beautiful and thank you for elaborating on on that image uh, i didn't think of it that way but yeah wow so so on the fourth image here uh please ex- explain it i can maybe tell what it is but could you explain first 
yeah, you, you see uh, the contradiction of uh, uh, the safety in the in the Western world mm -hmm. um, with the the des the despair uh, in in uh, yeah. I'm really sorry. I forgot. Uh, um, where the people come from, um, but you see, they are running. They are running for their lives. Right. And uh, uh, this, the girl on the, uh, in the front with the cat. Um, they are so so quiet um, that you cannot imagine it's happening in one world. Right. And. Uh, that's the main message, in fact, that uh, I bring two images together from the same world. Right. Uh, this That photo reminds me of the war in Georgia. I mean, what, I don't know if it was a war, but what happened in Georgia, in Europe, uh, I think in maybe the 90s or early 2000s, if I could, I don't remember exactly what year, but I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you remember that something was happening in Georgia, Georgia in Europe? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember when it was, uh, but but um, a lot of those countries they tried to split from Soviet Union that time, mm. and that gave a lot of trouble. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, when I was a kid, I didn't know, but. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. So they were trying to break away. Okay, so we're gonna lead uh, down now to. I see that you have regular photos, uh, and I love. <laughs> Maybe there's a term for that, <laughs> but I can't uh, say it. I don't know what it is. I love your eye or your point of view when you take pictures, and you are very. And, and it shows your passion and you have an eye for photography and that's that's perfect. It's awesome that you are doing exactly what you love and when you do it, it shows a message and it's beautiful. And I often promote to myself and others that do what inspires you. Actually, that's the tagline of my uh, company is I like to inspire people to do what inspires them. And I think when you do what inspires you, you, uh, uh, I don't know if you know Dr. Wayne Dyer. He says, when you are inspired, you are in spirit. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. And, and I love it. And I, I believe that 2020, well, even prior to 2020, I've noticed that a lot of people do things that they dislike. And sometimes I've done things that I don't like, like a job to get some money temporarily. And I think it's okay for growth so you can know what you want etc but for long term i think it is very important for people to do what they love and what brings them happiness and joy and they might do something temporarily that's not that doesn't bring them happiness but if everyone did that what makes them happy i think stress or depression and other mental illnesses or even physical illness will go would go down and it's very inspiring that I see that you're doing something that that makes you happy. And it inspires me as well. And that's a great thing when you do something for yourself, because that's who you are inside. People will see it and, and change themselves if, if they are ready or willing to as well. Because I'm very inspired. When I saw your your Instagram, I was blown away literally it's it's amazing and i never seen anything like that before so let's now talk about your instagram um so as we mentioned in introduction it's uh homoerotic would you explain what that term is for the audience homoerotic um that the the male body triggers you to erotic feelings is it a good description for you? Will it make something clear? Uh, sure. I 
I never looked at that word meaning before, but I just assume what it meant. So that's why I wanted you to uh, explain what it meant for, yeah. for you or for the in general. Yeah, that totally yeah. makes sense uh, because erotic and the only time I knew what erotic or heard erotic was from Madonna Erotica. <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you, if you know Madonna's song Erotica or album. Oh, yeah, that's when I heard of the word. I never searched of the word, and I, and of course, homo. I just guessed what it was, but I never went online to see what it meant, uh, literally. Uh, so you sent me some photos, which which I will show to the audience. Uh, there's a lot of photos that I, I myself, I think they are art. And I think, as I mentioned to you when I first met you online, your work belongs in a museum or a gallery. That's that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but others may not think so, and I think others who have uh, maybe society or religious morals, they may not think so, but your, your work is art. So... Can you tell us about your experience with being censored online, especially on Instagram? Like, how do you feel about being censored? Um, uh, in, in the beginning, uh, I didn't realize something was happening really like that. Um, it's, it's anyway, I started just with this... Um, find a word but uh, it's not completely hypnotized but I can get kind of hypnotized with the beauty of the male form um, so I started to work with that and uh, I I call it the rearranging of a photo when I make when I make this oh I get a phone call uh, well, yeah. so I stop it sorry um, <laughs> When uh, when I make uh, my work, I limit myself to use only one picture. Not like before, that I brought together several pictures and made a new one. Uh, nowadays, I rearrange one picture. Um, and I try to, to take the, the, the part that... Um, uh, triggers me the most. Mm -hmm. um, I get uh, followers on Instagram, uh, people reacting, and people start to send me pictures, and I really loved it, because um, nowadays you can find so much uh, nude, nude male, started to, to, to send me their own uh, nudes and then suddenly somebody started to send it me his and uh, yeah that was completely new for me and then I thought yeah but who am I to judge <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so I started to work with his and um, I just was uh, was making something about it, posting it, and it was accepted. And and I even didn't think Instagram would not accept it or accept it. I just did it. But then there came a moment. Yeah, then people started. People really liked it. Gays really like it that um, that you post on internet. On Instagram. <laughs>
was a bit shocked because I was posting and it disappeared and I get a warning and I get a new warning. Um, and and uh, it was also that, that uh, then suddenly they start to censor uh, 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 works of me that have nothing to do with or sexuality purely with the basic male form that I really get get also confused uh, about uh, what is happening here because I am uh, I, I, I uh, you, you have this platform Instagram and I am also a guest so if they have rules um, I want to accept that but uh, when I don't break the rules and still they censor me, then uh, it's not a reliable partner anymore. Right. So that became a bit difficult. But um, finally, I made a collection for you of that were uh, not censored. And uh, if you see that together, it's so difficult to understand why one picture is censored and the other not. And also who um, dictates what is censored and what is not. And finally I find out that the one that was uh, um, determined, determined of, uh, let's say dictate, dictates the censorship was a computer. Uh -huh. So um, I, I, I was fighting against a computer that looked to my work and uh, had a global idea and then uh, it said yes or no. Um, in the meantime, I had to start a new account because uh, uh, they say if you do one more mute against our rules, you lose everything. So I thought... I don't want that. I want to keep what I have. I just stop posting over there or at least everything or anything that um, that might be uh, this cute table. Uh, and I started a new uh, account. Uh, and I find a way to fool this computer. <laughs> so I, I, I was putting together and balls upside down and um, all these kind of things and um, I managed quite well uh, but again uh, sometimes they were more uh, more sharp than I was expecting so also this account is in danger and my brother Gregio account and now I, I did the, the following thing uh, I opened again an account and there I post my new work uh, I don't have really followers there uh, I'm, I'm not active on this account I only post it and I leave it for 24 hours and if no one is censoring me I know this robot or this computer uh, didn't recognize sexual activities or whatever and then I can post it on my Regio account oh so bit, smart yeah this is a bit how I work now and this morning I had a beautiful work from a from a very nice because I think when you rearrange they are all beautiful uh, and it was censored so it was really good that I uh, tried it out on my uh, try out account that's how I call it That's, that's very smart and you uh, beating that robot. Yeah, that robot is very annoying. And as you notice, <laughs> yeah, even on my account, my account is pretty 
quote unquote, not a term that I agree with, but quote unquote clean. And I often yeah. get censored still. And I'm like, how do I get? And I think in the beginning, what what I, my assumption is, if you get censored about certain things, no matter what yeah. you start posting, it will censor you automatically regardless because you have a history of being censored. I would post feet and it would censor me. I would post my back with my butt crack, but it's, it's not even anything sexual. It's because you see people's butt crack on the street all the time. It would censor yeah. me. And even yeah. I would have a photo of my crotch, it would censor me. But apparently if you have your crouch on the beach that's okay but if you have it indoors then it means sexual i've read something about that online about censorship and it's very okay. interesting how if you are in a big bathing suit with your underwear then it's okay but if you are in your underwear in your bedroom supposedly having a posed posing that is sexual then uh, that is sex and that is And it does not make sense, but it makes sense for someone who is, who who is a prude and who has morals of those things. Yeah. And it's just yeah, censorship. And I do understand maybe parts of reason of censorship. Example, keeping certain things quote unquote clean for uh, f- to not uh, what was that word unclean the eyes of children or keeps children safe etc etc however there is difference between art and or things that are not good for children and and if if instagram and i feel like instagram or facebook or certain places should be for adults period or the internet should be for adults period and because i remember one time on facebook i would post certain posts they were not sexual based they were just basically i'm a provocateur i like to post things or say things that makes people think or get out out of get out their own skin or get out the, their box to think critically and i posted something and someone said i'm going to unfollow you because i do not like your post your post is not safe for my children and i i immediately was offended and i wanted to say something but i learned not to respond to say anything online and i just either like it or don't respond or or have this thing on facebook the emoji that says care when people express their discontent i usually just do the emoji that says care as in i hear you i care about what you say but i don't need to make a comment but in my head i said your you are letting your children on the internet that they can see so far worse. That is that. Yeah. That first of all, that's not my problem. And second, you're the one who's a bad parent here. You're under 18 year old should not be on the internet. When I was there on the, on the internet, I was not looking for good things. And I know that when I was a kid, And it's funny, as an adult, I don't care to look for those things. But as a child, you are curious. And if that's available for you or to you, you're going to do it. So if you're a parent and you're not censoring your computer, and even on Facebook, he was on Facebook. He was nothing bad. So he didn't want his children to read something provocating that his children might think about. So that's not on me. (laughs) So is a censorship is complicated. Yeah, and, and, and um, anyway, uh, there cannot be a standard moral. Hey, you were talking about religious people; uh, they have a, a other moral than femini- feminists or Chinese people or. Um, uh, bakeries in the Netherlands, whatever, everybody has its own standard. And why uh, everybody has to interfere with each other. I, I understand this, this thing with children, but um, I, I got a feeling that uh, children, they take things as they are. 
Right. If they see a they don't uh, think uh, automatically it's sexual. They can maybe, if they never saw, they can think, what's this? Or whatever. The adults, they sexualize it. And I came to this conclusion that the people with the high moral standards like sexuality or nudity is uh, immoral, they sexualize it. If I look to a guy on a photo or in a statue with an erected um, I can think, oh my God, this is beautiful. But a relation person can say, it's sexual. And I can think, what? Hey, it's beautiful, it's not sexual, it's beautiful. And at that moment, he sexualized it, not me. And that's the problem with the people that try to educate the others in what is uh, what is uh, yet to be censored or not they make something of it what it is not exactly yeah that, that, that's my feeling what i what i have if you look uh, um, now we decided that um, our genitals uh, do i say it pronounce it right yes genitals yeah yeah um Somehow they came to um, to decide that this is uh, uh, immoral to show. Um, but all cultures, all societies, uh, in history, whatever, they have different standards. So who is right? Nowadays, with the corona, we have those face facial masks. Um, then maybe when... Uh, it should continue for many years, it can be immoral to take a facial mask away, to, to show in public, because people, yeah, your mouth, you can kiss somebody else, you can give a blow, you can lick your wife with it. Uh, one day, maybe, uh, a facial mask is a moral standard. Um, yeah, interesting. And, and it's funny, mark, mark your words, it might be because the way we're heading in our society, we'll see. I think, I think you 100% right in the future here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, maybe one day we can walk naked on the street, but with a facial mask. <laughs> <laughs> and we look at history and say, wow, that, that was interesting. <laughs> This whole thing with morality drives me nuts. Today, I saw on Instagram, uh, yeah, somebody started to follow me. Okay, who's this? And uh, then I went to his story, and there was a piece of meat baking on the barbecue. And the blood came out, and I thought, oh, um, is this? Okay, what he shows me, do I want to see this? Uh, uh, does he realize that uh, the animal that was dying for it um, probably suffered like hell, mm -hmm. um, was picked together, uh, threw his life away, had nothing, uh, maybe never saw uh, uh, the sky, never heard a bird, never was connected with what his life was meant to and uh, why can I not show it um, although that's the center of the most beautiful feeling you can have in life uh, at least now I take myself as uh, as norm uh, I'm so happy with this feeling the sexual feeling I have uh, how can it be that uh, morality says that's not good and, and putting animals together like this summer there, were, uh, there was a small heat wave in the Netherlands uh, farmers were not prepared they were putting animals in cars to 
Exactly. It drives me crazy. Mm hmm. Who, who is on top making those rules saying what is moral and what is immoral? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And, and that's a big, big question uh, we have to answer with each other. Are we not exaggerating with this whole sexual, the, the way we protect children? Like when I go with my child to a play garden and I make pictures, it might be that another father comes to me and beat me because he says that I'm a sexual making pictures of his child. I like photography. I like to make pictures of my child in a play garden. But nowadays, it's suspicious when an older guy walks into a play garden with a camera. And if they don't see you, you are with a child, they might beat you up. Right. And only, yeah, only because they sexualize it, not me. Right, exactly. Wow, it's... This this conversation can be an unpacked uh, so much more with different topics. Uh, and I'm very glad and happy to have met you online and to even have you explain your your art to the world and to me and i'm definitely showing your art to the world to to the extent of what i can show online definitely because it's not uh, as much as i would like to be uncensored 100 percent, but to the extent of what online people will take and the world needs to to ask themselves the question of their morality uh for example with the statue example you were making of the when I when you go to the museum you notice how a lot of statues have their cut off and graffiti etc when it's just part of the human body and as you mentioned people sexualize it and I have a I've I think that a lot of and I've seen with history online on the news a lot of people who are who have high, high morals like the priesthood or or people in politics in the news, they are the ones who are doing those things that they are against. They are the ones who are m- children. They are the ones who have yes. sex trafficking with with children. They are the ones, people who are against drugs are the ones who are doing drugs in hotels with other people and, and they're dying and they're doing all these things. And if we say, hey, we're humans and we do things and there's a, of course, there's a limit. You're not going to exploit children however if it's nothing ex- explorative let it go because that's part of being humans and yeah. so that's a big long topic or subject and and uh, I think yeah. the world have gotten better definitely from the grips of religion uh, but there's so much more to go from there so a question for you is how is someone listening to this can find your art and how can they be involved? Um, my art is to be seen on Instagram. Uh, my main account is uh, Brother Gregio. Um, and they can send me a DM with their picture. And uh, we can talk about it. Uh, I just rearrange it. I make a new form of it. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So simple. Nice. And do you have any any next project in line that's something different? Or you just enjoying this for now and nothing? Yeah, um, I... Uh, try to to widen up myself a bit uh, again I don't know if I say it right but to um, I, I have a second account uh, that I go call temporary uh, gay art for you that I uh, have more freedom I give more freedom to myself to uh, to make still this homo erotic art within a different way more recognizable 
That's amazing. Thank you so much for talking to us today. And I'm very excited to show your art to everyone. That's all. So thank you so much, uh, Brother Gregorio. Thank you, Zen, for, for having this talk with me. So interesting. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. Oh, I appreciate you a lot. That's why we have this connection to It's a uh, two-way two direction. Thank you so much, Zen. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.